Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. So in the previous two videos, we went over how to draw a rectangle on the screen to represent the player. And we also went over how to process key inputs from the keyboard to move the player around. So I'm just going to quickly run the program and show you what we have so far. And you can see we have a rectangle to represent the player. And if I press the arrow keys or the WASD keys, you can see the player is moving around. So in this video, we're going to go over how to draw images so that we don't have to use the rectangle anymore. And at the same time, we will be adding a background for our game. So to begin, first we need to get some images. And for this tutorial series for the game that we're building, we're going to use these images from the Mega Man game. And for the most part, I have to do the pixel art myself. So in later videos, you'll find more images in the GitHub link. But for now, this is what we have so far. And for this tutorial, I'm just going to use the Mega Man right image and the background. And in later videos, we'll use more of these images. So just download the images and drag them to your folder. All right, so once you have the images, the first thing we need to do is load the images. So here I'm going to create an image, background image. And this is going to be pygame.image.load. And we need the directory of where this image is located. So if your file is located in the same directory as the images, you can just put the image name here. But I have mine inside an images folder. So you can see I have an images folder with all these PNG files and my Python files are outside. So in this case, I will do folder images slash background dot PNG. And depending on your operating system, you would have to do forward slash or backslash. So let me just do forward slash and then I'll show you how to resolve this issue if you have an error saying that the image could not be found. So we have our background image loaded and now in the draw function, I'm going to do window dot blit and here we need to specify the image. So background image and where to place the image. So the window itself is a rectangle and the image is also a rectangle. So here we would specify the X, Y positions and the width and height of the image. In this case, we can omit the width and height and just specify the X and Y position. So if I do zero, zero, then the background image is going to be drawn starting from the top left corner of our window. And if I hover over the image, you can see the width is 640 and the height is 560. So this is actually bigger than our window size because our window is 512 by 512. So this means that when we draw the entire image, part of it is going to be cut off. And this is okay for me, but if you want to scale the image down, you can do so. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. So let's just save and run the program. And you can see we have the image of the background, which is a mountain. And the background is also blue. And if I take this line and I draw it after and I save and run the program, you can see the mountain image disappears. So order matters. Basically, we want to fill the background with blue first and then draw over it. So when you're drawing, you're basically layering images on top of each other. So I'm going to undo that. All right, so we want to paint the background first and then paint the image. And since the image is a rectangle, we can change the X and Y position. So maybe I don't want the mountain to be up so high. So if I save and run the program, you can see the mountain is all the way over here. Maybe I want to lower it a bit. So I'm going to change the Y position and make it 80. So remember, going down is positive. So now the image will be drawn further down. So if I save and run the program, you can see the mountain has been lowered. All right, so let's go over loading the image and here I'm using a forward slash, but if you're using a different operating system, maybe you might use a backslash. And in this case, when you combine backslash with a letter such as backslash N or backslash T, this is new line character, this is the tab character, and backslash B is the backspace character. So in this case, we don't want to do a single backslash. To get the backslash character, we will do double backslash. So if I save and run the program, you can see for me, I can use the backslash to access the image as well as the forward slash. But this is just for my computer. Maybe for yours, the directory separator would be forward slash or backslash. So in this case, to get rid of that issue, I'm going to import OS. And here I'm going to replace this 
with os.path.join. So here we want the folder name, so it would be images. And here I want the file name, so background.png. Okay, so make sure you have the file extension as well. And with this, we don't have to worry about whether it's a backslash or forward slash. We can just have the function take care of it for us. So if I save and run the program, you can see we have the background image over here. All right, so that's for the background image. Now let's load the player image. So the player image, I'm going to call it player image right. And that is because by default, we're going to use the image of Mega Man facing right. So we're going to do pygame.image.load os.path.join images. And the image is Mega Man dash right.png. So I'm just going to open it up on the side. And you can see, even though the image is transparent, it is actually still a rectangle. So when we're assigning the X and Y position, the image starts drawing from this top left corner. So it's going to be Mega Man dash right.png. Now the next thing I want to do is replace this rectangle. And that is because the rectangle has an X and Y position as well as a width and height, but it does not have an image attribute. So what I'm going to do is create a class called player, and we're going to have it inherit pygame.rec. And then let's create a constructor. And for those of you who are not familiar with inheritance or object-oriented programming, I have a complete tutorial on object-oriented programming in Python on my channel, and I'll link it in the video description so you can check it out later. But essentially, we are creating another class that inherits pygame.rec. So basically, this new class is going to take on all the properties and functionalities of a rectangle in pygame, except we can add more attributes and functionalities. So here, I can do self.image, and just set it to player image right. And we want to initialize the X and Y positions and the width and height. So I'm going to call the constructor of pygame.rec. So pygame.rec dot double underscore in it. And here I'm going to pass in self. And I could copy and paste these numbers over here. But what I'm going to do is add some variables here. So player X will be game width divided by two and player Y will be game height divided by two. That way, Mega Man will more or less appear in the center of our screen. Then I'll do player width and set it to 42. And player height, I'll set it to 48. And the reason why I'm using these numbers is if I hover over Mega Man, you can see the image width is 210 and the height is 240. So the ratio is seven to eight. So 210 is seven times 30 and 240 is 8 times 30. So I'm maintaining the 7 to 8 ratio and just multiplying it by 6. So it's 7 to 8 and this is 7 times 6 and this is 8 times 6. Okay, so you want to scale the image properly so that you don't stretch it out and it becomes all pixelated. So down here, I'm going to pass in player X, player Y, player width, and player height. And now when I create the player, I don't need to do this. I can just do player like so, okay? Now the player has an image, so we don't want to draw rectangles anymore. So I'm going to get rid of this. And here I'll do window.blit and the image will be player.image. And here I would put the X and Y positions. So it would be player.x and player.y, or I can just pass in player since player is a rectangle, and the rectangle includes the X and Y positions. All right, so let's save and run the program. And as you can see, the top left corner, X and Y position is game width divided by two and game height divided by two. So it starts drawing around here, and the image is actually quite big because we did not scale the image. So again, the image is 210 pixels wide and 240 pixels tall. So this is a large chunk of our screen. So what I want to do is scale the image down and make it 42 pixels by 48 pixels. And I'm going to reuse the same variable name. So here I'll do pygame.transform.scale and we need an image. So I'll just pass in player image right. And then we need to specify the width and height. So this will be player width and player height. All right, now let's save and run the program. And you can see the image of Mega Man is now smaller. So it is 42 pixels for the width and 48 pixels for the height. 
And of course, I can move Mega Man around because this is what we implemented in the previous video. So we have a background and we have Mega Man, the player. Now there's one more thing I want to add and that is this icon on the top left. So by default, the icon is the Pi Game logo. We can actually change the icon. So to do so, over here, I would just do pygame.display.set underscore icon. And we would just pass in an image. So here I'll do player image right. And you want the image to be scaled and small enough. So I'm going to save and run the program. So you can see we scale the image down and the Mega Man image is now the logo of our game. All right, so we have a background image. We have the player as Mega Man and we have an icon. And from the previous video, we can move the player. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to go over how to prevent Mega Man from moving past the boundaries of our screen because when we're moving around, we are subtracting or adding to the X and Y positions. And if they go out of bounds, well, the player will just fall off the screen. So it wouldn't be visible to us. All right, so that's all for drawing images. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more Python game programming tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.